Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And welcome to another Remember the Name segment where we are going to look back on the career of the man with the barbecue, Romino Funes Mori. And for that, I'm joined by Terry and Paul McAllister. We'll start at the beginning, lads. You know, when, when he first arrived, it was on deadline day in 2015, wasn't it? And it was just, I think we were all, we knew we needed a left footed centre back after this time left, but were you expecting it to be Ramiro Funes Mori? Um, like a, um, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I, I'd never heard of him at all. I, I, I don't keep up with South American football at all, really. So I, I, I had no idea who this player was, but on paper, he sounded quite good because he was an established Argentina international. And wasn't his last game for River Plate like um, their equivalent to the Champions League? Yeah. I don't know, whatever the average was. Yeah, he, he scored the winner in that game, didn't he? So he was like this cult hero all over. Um, Buenos Aires or whatever, uh, River Plate are based. So yeah. basically, he, yeah, he was coming in with this sort of big reputation, but also um, a bit of a mystery because unless you're, you you watch South American football regularly, I had no idea who he was. But as I mentioned, when you see all these things on paper, he's loved by Argentina fans. He's an Argentine international. He's good for a goal. He, he looks big and strong. I thought, right, we'll have a bit of this. I, um, I think this could be just what Everton needs. The sort of tough, old-fashioned centre-half we can all get behind. So when he came in, I was more than happy to give him a chance. And when the likes of Tim Vickery and all these other pundits were all writing him off and slagging him, I was one of the ones saying, leave him alone. You don't know what you're talking about. Give him a chance. But in the end, it just didn't work out for various reasons, did it? So... No, and uh, I think we have to go back to that deadline day where the rumour was that we could have bought Virgil van Dijk and bought Funes Mori instead. I think that's only a bit of a blot on the track record if ever there was one. Well, what happened with van Dijk? He was at Celtic, wasn't he? And I don't know how serious the talks ever were between us and van Dijk. I mean, did we ever actually bid for him? Or did we actually go to Celtic and open up any dialogue? Because... It's easy for Everton to get linked with a player. We get linked with everyone. But whether there was actually any, you know, real efforts to try and sound Van Dijk out, I don't know. Because if it, came, if it comes out that Everton were never really in for Van Dijk in the first place, then I think fans could maybe stomach it a bit better. But the narrative over the last few years seems to be that we went for Van Dijk, we were told to pay a certain amount. And Martin was basically just to save a few million, went and got this Argentina, Argentina lad instead. So... Do you or Terry know at all? Were we ever serious about going for Van Dijk? Or? I'm not Apparently, sure. we well, what I heard, I mean, was that we were offered Van Dijk by his agents because you've got to remember Van Dijk wasn't then the Van Dijk he is now. This is pre pre Southampton. Um, well, I heard that the agent, uh, Van Dijk's agents, offered him to Everton and Everton um, passed on him. For financial reasons, because they could get feuds worry for us, like you say, a shade cheaper. Um, they were obviously looking for that left sided centre back, you know, mould. And I think um, they just saw feuds money. You've got to remember as well, it's it's funny to think about now, but we were all very high on Martinez at the time. Because he I just well, no, it was after the back of that. By, by this point, we've gone out to Dinamo Kiev, so I kind of gone off him by this point yeah. of it. No, this, this uh, was after the second season where I was not in love with Martinez at all, but that, that's just me. Well, all right. Well, we'll put it this way: we we were Martinez had full control of transfers, didn't he? And he was very much into football, and you know, footballers. You know, we were good on the ball, and I think the perception at the time was, which is hilarious now. That Van Dijk wasn't as good on the ball as Funes Murray, and he wanted like some a, a sort of left-sided John Stones to go alongside him. But and yeah, basically, you know, I, I remember when we got Murray, uh, Funes Murray. I was, I actually thought he, he looked the part. He, I thought he's physically he's got it. He's big, strong. He's you know he's not lightning quick, but he's certainly not you know Alcaraz or Jaggy Alka slow. But he, he he did have decent ability on the ball. And he had good aggression little bit too much in some instances but he had good yeah. aggression of attacking the ball on corners he, you know defensive defensively and um, you know offensively and it, it seemed like you know a good move at the time you know it, it, it 
nobody's got like a crystal ball and knew that, you know, oh, t- passing on Van Dyke, letting them go to Southampton would have been a big mistake. I mean, to be honest, if we'd have got Van Dyke, he'd have ended up in City a few years later anyway, because you know, he wouldn't have sold him to Liverpool and City were looking at him at that same time. So he would he'd be he'd be at City now and that timeline's probably a lot more pleasant to live in than the one we're in now. But him um, <laughs> Well, Fumes, Murray, he was a Premier League defender. He had everything, all the attributes, but he just, he was a typical Martinez, Martinez by. He was all a lot lot more, <laughs> as is apt for Fumes, Murray, he had a lot more sizzle than he had steak. You know, he had too many mistakes in him. He had too many, um, you know, moments of madness, like the, the stupid sending off in the derby, and then he grabs the badge, and you're like, oh, mate, I know you think that's, that's going over quite well, but you've you just you know done us in in a derby, which we was struggling anyway. I, don't, I think ability wise he was good, but mentality wise he was a bit he was off his head, wasn't he? He was off his rocker, absolutely. I think that was a good way of putting it. I mean, the worst thing for me about the derby sending off wasn't that he got sent off in the derby because we were getting our asses handed to us anyway at this at that stage of that game, but it was the fact that he got himself suspended for the semi final when. We were short on centre backs, you know. We yeah. we were struggling for personnel at the back, and he went and got himself suspended when we needed them. And you know that 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 could have cost us a place in the cup final. What he done there? It's it's really, we had to play yeah. and get Jackie Elka, and didn't Bessic have to play at right back or something? Because we Bessage, had no right Bessage, back. Bessic was at right back because he played Oviedo at right back in that derby, and that went disastrously. So he saw. Let's le- at least try a right footed player at right back. I know it just it's hard it, to think about, what, isn't it? It spoke volumes for the lack of discipline in the um, in the Martinez, you know, sort of camp. And he, you know, he wasn't much later that he, you know he did lose his job. But I don't know. I I look back on Fumes Murray and, and like you know, I think he's he's remembered. You know, history is kinder to him in light of what we've done since he's left because if we'd have moved on to bigger and better you know players and things and done really good business since he was sold I think people would look on him a lot you know less favourably but now you think well was he really worse than Ashley Williams yeah was he was he worse than Ashley Williams you know what I mean is he we brought brought him him after we got rid of Alcaraz as well so that must put him up on a bit of a pedestal as well you've had some terrible players mate but I don't think Barry was one of them like he, he I loved, I lo- you know, as much as he loved his barbecues, he loved the knee slides as well. And I like that. I like players who slide on the knees when they score. It's proper day. Highlight real stuff, isn't it? And he yeah, was, yeah, he was yeah. Always- to be fair, that was one of the best like highlights of that season as well, was the goal we scored against Man City, which in the semi-final, which really, if he yeah. weren't as off, if he weren't as off by Sterling and the referee and whatnot, we might yeah. have got into a final with that, you know. Yeah. If you know, the, um, oh, the fire that season was full of sliding doors moments that just went against us. Our entire history is full of them. <laughs> wait, 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 I was going to say that's symbolic of Everton, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the, the thing that I knew him about Funas Mori is as well. I remember um, when he came in, I touched on it before. There was a lot of pundits who were like saying he was going to fail. Um, Tim Vickery was the main one saying, "Oh." Um, he doesn't have the pace and he doesn't have the physicality for the English Premier League. Now, because Funes Mori came in and ultimately wasn't successful, a lot of people were um, saying, oh, well, they've been vindicated, all those pundits told us he wasn't great. But if you if you look back at it, Funes Mori in his first six months was actually really good. I he felt good. I Jackie Elka. Yeah, he was mostly at the back with John Stones, wasn't he? Because Jackie Elka was um, was injured a lot of that season. Um, kind of in and out of the so Funes Mori was like the um, the main centre half of that campaign. He was at, he, he, Stones and Jagielka kind of alternated, didn't he? Um, but I remember um, Tim Vickery saying things like, "He hasn't got the pace. He hasn't got the physicality. He's going to get bullied in the Premier League." I, I and, thought he handled himself quite well in that respect. I didn't think that yeah. was his issue. Exactly. That was what I was going to come to. That was not his problem at all. He was he was absolutely old as old in the Premier League. He just didn't have the concentration and he didn't have the discipline. So that was a case of people um, like Tim Vickery trying to be clever before the evidence was in. So they weren't indicated at all. Funas Body is a decent level um, defender and he 
probably be an asset to a lot of clubs in the Premier League who were down the bottom. But yeah, I just thought he, his only issue was that he was a bit erratic. Erratic, <laughs> like he was a lunatic. He, 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 he's got, he has three or four big mistakes in him that are going to cost you points every season. He, he, he's going to do something stupid, like get himself sent off, or he's going to give away a goal, or he's going to score an own goal, something mad. We just He was too inconsistent, and we just couldn't rely on him. And as Teddy said, history's been kinder to him. A lot of people seem to think he was remember him as being better than what he actually was now. Because other than that first six months, I, I just wasn't overly impressed with him. I, I mean, after the, the derby fiasco, I, I, he wasn't one of my favourite players anyway. But for me, he never really got, um, got um, I can, never found his rhythm, never found his feet. I think he never had like a long stretch of games other than that first six months where I felt, yeah, this lad's all right. We're going to we can build around this lad because when him and Stones were together for the second half of the campaign, we were absolutely awful. We were shipping goals. I don't think he kept yeah. a clean sheet. It was ter- it was terrible. <laughs> that was the end. That was when Martinez was really losing his marbles, wasn't it? When yeah, went on. And for all and for all the um, praise Stones was getting at the time, oh, he's this majestic goal carrying. I thought I thought he was atrocious that season. Yeah, he was. They, they were an atrocious pairing together, but neither one of them seemed to be getting any pelters. Everyone seemed to just blame him Martinez for the reason the defence was crap. Whereas they were pointing things at the two centre halves, who were an absolute Paul and Bear together and had too many lunatic moments in them. Whereas Stones is doing Cruyff turns in the box. Tell, tell the fan, telling the fans to calm down when he's like doing a Cruyff turn on his own goal line. On his own goal line. Yeah, this is a video about Funes Mori. We'll talk with Stones another day. But Funes Mori, he went. He's, where did he go? He went to Villarreal, didn't he? After we got yeah, rid of him. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think was it Allardyce who sold him. It was Marco Silva sold him. Yeah, yeah. I remember he got injured, didn't he, in Cumin in Cumin's um, first season, yeah. and he was basically he was gone the majority of that second season, the the, the 2017-18 mess of a season. He, he came back towards the end, didn't he? And I think Allardyce gave him a little look and decided he, he wasn't for him. And then, obviously, he's gone in the summer, hasn't he, when Silva's gone in. But the point is, he's gone to Villarreal, and I haven't kept up with him, to be honest. I've, has anyone kept an eye on him at Villarreal? Has he done anything over there? Or Not that I know of. I, don't, I haven't seen him pull up any trees or anything, if that's what you mean. I can tell you. I'll tell you one thing, though. His, leg, his lasting legacy for me at Everton will be the greatest tweet in all of football, Twitter. Was him when we were signing him, John Meadow. Uh, everyone was, you know, kicking off over Tim Vickery, slating him when this new player ever we're going to sign. And John Meadow tweets, Tim Vickery is a. Sp- John. Sorry. Tim Vickery is. John Vickery. John Vickery. You can't Tim even get it out, man. Tim Vickery. Go, go on, Paul. Go ahead. John, yeah. That's, it makes me laugh so much. <laughs> Tim Vickery is a failed school teacher who went to Brazil for more sex opportunities. He is not the oracle when it comes to um, South American footballers. Fantastic. <laughs> that is fantastic. He's right. I'm, I'm, I'm to go. not even I'm, relevant to the conversation of him as a player. I just always remember that tweet. It's just a school teacher who moved to Brazil for, for greater sex opportunities. <laughs> he is not the oracle on South American footballers. A lot of people were like, oh, well, Tim Vickery, has been vindicated, he told us he was going to be not good enough, and look how right he was. The, the excuse, the reasoning he made for why Funes Mori wouldn't cut it at Everton is not why he didn't cut it. He said he'd be too weak, uh, he didn't have the pace, uh, um, he, he, he's not good on the ball. That was not Funes Mori's problem. His problem was he just couldn't head. concentrate. Yeah, it was all in his head. Funes Mori would be great, I think, in somewhere like the the Championship. He'd be levels above that because it is literally or somewhere like Italy, where all you've got to do is just sit in your own box and just head the ball clear. He'd be great in a league like that. Yeah, it's just... It's, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't it's, as bad as he was. No, it wasn't, so, it, wasn't, it wasn't his physicality. It was his brain, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, so yeah. the point is, Tim Vickery was, and the people who were slagging Funes Mori before he'd even played for us were trying to be clever. And so he could have the credit afterwards. So it's like, no, you haven't been vindicated. Funes Mori did well in that first six months. And ultimately, the reason he didn't work out was because he just, we couldn't rely on him in big moments. Not because he 
he can't carry the ball or because he's a wimp. Definitely, I think I think it's worth remembering anyone who tries to injure a player in the derby and then gets a red card and then like kisses the badge after it. I think they've got to be missing a couple of brain cells, haven't they? Yeah. I was finished with him after that. I, I, to, to be honest, if anyone thinks that that was good, or I've seen people use that as like Twitter profile pictures and things like that, that that sums up why we don't win derbies and why we don't go anywhere in cup competitions. Because when football, when Everton players and Everton supporters think it's great when you kick people instead of actually trying hard to win the game. But he, he, I don't know what you're watching the sport for. Go watch rugby if you want to watch a bunch of people bashing each other about. Funes Mori after that, I was. As you said, um, James, he, it wasn't just the fact that he got himself, himself sent off in a derby because the, the game had gone. He, he, he was unavailable for the most important game of the season and it probably lost us the game because we yeah, were absolutely... I, th- I, I think it did. Yeah. I think if Funes Mori plays in that game, there's a very, very strong chance we, we'd have beaten United because I was at Wembley that day. United were absolutely terrible. We were terrible. We were there for the taking. The only reason we didn't win it's because we were just missing too many um, crucial players. And because Lukaku wants to miss about 10 sixes as well. Let's not forget that. But Funes Mori, all this, oh, he has barbecues, he does all these knee slides, he kisses the badge after he kicks Liverpool players. No, bore off with that at the end of the day. He was an absolute idiot of a player. I don't doubt the fact that he, he went on the pitch and tried hard, but he wasn't cut out for a, a team as big as Everton because at a team as big as Everton, you can't behave like that and expect everyone to love you. And if they do love you, then there's something up. I mean, to be fair, he played for arguably one of the biggest teams in South America before he came to Everton. So, you know, he has played for very yeah, big clubs. But... In Argentina, they're not, they're not happy unless... You are kicking they're... players. Yeah, they, their supporters go to football games and knife each other. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a, It was just a cultural thing at the end of the day. And, and he's still loved by Argentina in the back in Argentina to this day and he probably could go back to River Plate anytime he feels like and get a hero's welcome which is probably what he's going to end up doing but yeah. Funes Mori I, I don't I don't hate him there's a lot of players I've, I've got no time for who've come through the club the last couple of years and he's one of them to be honest I've just it's like whatever you came well, you had to go you didn't invest go away <laughs> there you go that's probably a good way for us to finish then isn't it uh, yeah, so they have it. That's the, the Funes Mori throwback. Let's just say that was a, a bit of a mixed review there, wasn't it? He's one of those players, isn't he? Like he, he's, he's, he was. He had a very mixed Everton career. There was a lot of. I know a lot of people who, who like, rated him and thought that he deserved longer, but it's one of them, isn't it? It's just one of them. That's, I think literally every Everton debate I ever had ends with it's just one of them, isn't it? <laughs> But there you have it, guys. That's the end of the Funes Mori throwback, if you like. Let us know your memories of Funes Mori and what you made of his contribution to Everton during his three-year spell that he had here. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. Give us a like and a subscribe as well. And thank you for watching on the Toffee Blues.